having studied various aspects of amines, its nomenclature, preparation, physical properties, chemical properties, various reactions we have studied. It is now time to study one important compound of amine which is benzene disonium chloride. A minor study of this was done during our discussion in uh, amines chapter during the study of uh, various amines, but now this is one different segment of this amines where we study its preparation properties and chemical properties because they have a very high industrial application where various organic compounds can be prepared by utilizing this compound and specifically it is for the aromatic compounds preparation. So, before we go into the study of this let us see the answers for the assignment that was offered in the earlier segment. The first question uh, we have it here explain carbylamines reaction. It is nothing but the primary amines which is aliphatic as well as aromatic if they are treated with chloroform and uh, alcoholic KOH we get uh, a foul smelling compound which is uh, isocyanide. So, these isocyanides indicate the presence of primary amines in the system also and byproducts KCl and water has been obtained here. What is the chemical composition of Innsberg reagent? It is benzene sulfonyl chloride C6H5SO2Cl. So, this was actually utilized if you remember in understanding the differentiation between primary, secondary and tertiary amines. The third question explain the reaction of bromination of aniline at room temperature. Now, since it is a room temperature, we know that NH2 group is a highly activating group, it is an ortho para directing because it is an electron donating group. Therefore, the possibilities of ortho and para come up and since it is a highly activating group, all the positions whichever has a negative charge in resonance will be thoroughly substituted and therefore, you get 2 comma 4 comma 6 tri bromo aniline. So, this is the reaction that we come across uh, in this case of bromination of aniline at room temperature. So, starting with the topic of uh, benzene disonium chlorides, these are nothing but generally having R N 2 plus X minus which indicates that the nitrogen atom here in total there are two nitrogens. So, we can call it as di aza, aza indicates nitrogen, di indicates 2. So, various X ions can be generally X we indicate as halogens which is F minus Cl minus Br minus I minus, but here X actually indicates various negative ions which can be stabilized in this cases. Uh, therefore, you find that HSO4 minus which is hydrogen sulphate ion, BF4 minus borosulphate fluoride ion all this can be utilized. You do not find F minus or I minus because F minus is highly reactive, I minus is very low reactive compound. So, therefore, this type of a compound is called as benzene disonium chloride where N2 group which is there can be called as the diazonium group which is present. So, we have already realized that suppose if you remember the reactions that we happen to study where in C2 preparations were done NaNO2 HCl 0 to 5 degree centigrade. I already told that in C2 indicates HNO2 preparation inside the mixture and uh, we do get such a compound, but unfortunately this is highly unstable. So, immediately it uh, reacts with water and uh, you get corresponding alcohol along with uh, nitrogen gas and various other byproducts. Now, since this is unstable, you cannot utilize this reaction because directly you get alcohols, the reaction does not stop here. But the same thing if you undertake the presence of aniline and to this aniline if you undertake this reaction NaNO2 HCl in 0 to 5 degree centigrade, you get the intermediate compound which is actually a little stable. This is how the overall uh, positioning of the compound happens. Now, in this case a lone pair will be present here whereas this will hold the positive charge. That is because nitrogen we know that outermost there are 5 electrons, 3 of them are here in this uh, triple bond 1, 2, 3, another 2 is present as lone pair. The lone pair on this nitrogen actually has come in the support of bonding. So, this is a type of compound which is utilized as benzene disonium chloride. 
which can actually undergo many reactions. And like the way we have resonance structures for say aniline, we have it for phenol. Similarly, we can have resonance structures for these compounds because why it happens is this is no problem, it has been stabilized, three bonds and one lone pair. But unfortunately not this. This nitrogen has three bonds and then it has a positive charge. So we know what do you mean by positive charge? It means deficiency. So to, to satisfy the deficiency, what we should do now? These two electrons, this double bonded electrons which are there can actually go up here and form double bond. So this resonance is what we see in the case of benzene disonium chloride that the presence of positive charge on nitrogen will yield to the setup where the double bonded benzene ring will donate the electrons towards the positive nitrogen which is present. And in this presence what happens is there is a positive charge generated at ortho, para as well as ortho. Now this is not to be confused with the electrophilic substitution because the positive charge is not just at ortho, para or ortho, it is also present on the nitrogen there. So therefore it becomes uh, very important for us to understand that this sort of a resonance structure keeps it a little bit stabilized. This is the reason why primary aliphatic amines form highly unstable salt whereas primary aromatic amine does form a little stable salt at lower temperatures. If you raise the temperature, it will once again be reactive and form various other compounds. This is the preparation which I already discussed now where if you take aniline and then undertake an in C2 preparation where HNO2 is being generated that is acting as a reagent and finally you get the benzene diazonium chloride salt. Here it is represented as halide because the hydrogen halide taken is HX. If you take Cl in that case, then you can get it as a benzene ring N2 plus and Cl minus. So this is how the overall uh, reaction preparation takes place in this case which was in fact uh, studied in earlier cases also. So one important thing to understand here is that the N2 plus which is formed is pretty reactive. We know very well that ions are not stable. When we undertake a comparative study, then we say that tertiary carbocation is greater than secondary, greater than primary based on stability. But in this case, general one is that ions are generally not stable and therefore this type of a compound retains stability for some time and it undergoes reactions further. So what are the physical properties of this compound which we have prepared? The physical property is that it is colorless crystalline solid and since it is pretty much ionic in nature, we know that like compounds dissolve in like solvents. So since this is ionic, water is also an ionic solvent, polar solvent, we know it and therefore it will be very readily soluble in water. So this is stable in cold but then if you increase the temperature, then it will not be just physical dissolution in water, it will directly go to react in water. That is the reason why the temperature in preparation is 0 to 5 degree or if you are talking about Kelvin scale, it is 273 to 278 Kelvin. So suppose you increase the temperature, then instead of having a physical relationship with water, it has a chemical relationship where it chemically reacts with water. It decomposes easily in the dry state, decomposes because it is ionic in nature, not very stable. So if you have it in a general state for a long time, it will decompose. Benzene disonium fluoroborate is water insoluble and stable at room temperature. This is one uh, applicative compound which can be seen where this benzene compound along with the fluorine and boron combination can remain as a stable system. So this is a brief uh, ideology about these benzene uh, diazonium chloride compounds where we have just studied about the preparation and certain physical properties of these compounds. Now please understand that it is not the preparation or the physical properties which is of great importance in our industrial chemistry. It is actually the chemical reactions that these compounds undertake which are utilized in many organic preparations. That aspect let us study in the last part of this chapter. Thank you, Sairam.